Hello guys, how's it going? Alex Grandpa here, I hope you're well. So today we got another episode on Audi A3 and starting with that, it's not going to be only on Audi A3 because as you know, or you might know already, that the VAG group, a lot of them use 2 liter TDI or 1.9 TDI engine with the same gearboxes or if there is a difference, obviously 5 or 6 speed or slightly different model, they are pretty much identical, there's not a lot of difference on how to do the job. So I think the video that you're going to watch today is going to be really helpful in case you're wondering how to replace the gearbox or maybe how to replace your flywheel or clutch this is going to explain a lot of it and give you a lot of info so if you watch my previous episodes obviously i explained that the main issue on the car is the gearbox the fourth and sixth gears are knackered and on some of the gearboxes that they have that problem so that's why i got the second hand unit there that i got from a mate of mine who actually has got a lot of different parts for especially mark 5 golfs but he does a lot of different VAG group cars and he got a lot of gear for you if you're interested and very good prices as well. So he's been doing this for ages. I will leave his um, link and all the info about him in the description below, guys. So do have a look. Like I say, he'll sort you out with the best bits for you and very good deals. Right, so everyone might have a different way of doing this job, but I prefer to start at the top by taking the engine cover off. You have to take the whole air intake system off of here, the airbox, uh, the battery has to be disconnected, removed out of there and the battery carrier has to come out as well. Uh, then you're going to be able to see all the gearbox pretty much and from there you have to remove the, um, so the first thing I would remove probably is the gear linkages, then the starter motor, disconnect all of that, unplug a couple of sensors, um, then you can remove most of the bolts that hold the gearbox to the engine as long as they mount still on there. Then we'll go up, get the drive shafts off, we'll get the ball joints, split them, and you'll see why, and remove all the covers and everything that you need to in order to get obviously the gearbox out of there. Uh, so guys, please be careful. I do advise having two people when you're getting the gearbox out of there because it is very heavy, the six speed, and just to avoid any issues, please make sure you got your friend or someone helping you doing that. And the other thing I would say is it is very important to have a tool to support the engine while you're doing the job, because obviously once the mount is off, there's nothing supporting it, uh, so you have to have the tool. You can get the top tool that you put on here, across the bonnet, um, on the strongest points obviously, to support the engine with the chain, or you can do what I'm going to be doing today, using transmission jacks, two of them, so one's going to be supporting the engine under it, and the other one's going to be supporting the gearbox, because like I said, it is heavy, and I'm going to be doing it on my own, so hopefully that will help me to adjust the height and everything else. Because yeah, once you're done the mount guys, there's nothing supporting it and it is really heavy. So please be careful there. But yeah, I'm going to be taking you through all the steps, giving you all the spec and info and tools you need. And obviously show you after the torque settings you're going to need to put everything back on as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys and let's crack on with it. Right, so the first thing, disconnect the battery. I'll just take the cover off. Uh, you need to take the 10 mil off the nut or undo it a little bit to loosen it up. One of them is already disconnected. So undo this one. Then next thing will be, um, there's gonna be a 30 mil bracket down there. Obviously my one's missing, you can see just the hole there because I think someone when they replaced the battery forgot to put it on there, so that's not very good. Need to sort that out. But there's gonna be a 30 mil bolt holding the battery down. Right, so next thing is disconnect all of this. I can see that it's been repaired. I suspect the plug is broken, but obviously I have to unplug it in order to get the airbox out of there. And then I'll see what's happening with that. If I need to, obviously we'll have to fix that properly so get that off of there for now yeah it's not good it's not very good get it out of the way you have to disconnect the vacuum pipe as well lovely jubbly and there is usually an allen key yeah that's it slightly damaged but it's an allen key i'm pretty sure yeah it's the five mil one I'm pretty sure it's held on this side just with the rubber locators. That's it. 
So then you have to remove this part as well. Yeah, hose that goes into there. There you go. Starts to come out. Have to go past the pipe that you got there. I'm gonna disconnect it from there as well by using the pliers. There we go. Well, the jobly. The box out. So, like I said, once that is out, now we have to remove the gearbox, uh, the battery carrier, and the covers. There you go. So it's only plastic clips holding it in. Right. So as you can see, obviously now that we removed the air intake, the air filter box, all we got left is the battery carrier, which is the 10 mils that you can see there. There's one 10 mil there. There's another 10 mil there, and I'm pretty sure there's another one there. Yeah, so we're gonna do three of them, and this whole thing should come off and give us a lot more space there. Now that the battery carrier is out, you can see the top of the mount. So, this is something that we'll have to remove in the end in order to get the gearbox out of there. Um, so, this is the let me just get the light. So, here we got the 30 mils holding. So this is your gear linkages. We have to remove them. Uh, so there's little clips that slide off of there, as you can see. So that clip will have to come off. And the same one here. Uh, I would recommend using a bit of double D40 when you're getting them off of there so they don't seize up. So you have to get that, slide that off of there as well. And then remove the three 30 mil bolts that are holding it on there. So there's one there, another one there, and one on the side there. So that one there, just lift it up and slide it off. So this middle bit just lifts up and it slides off and job done. So like I said, if you want, use a bit of WD-40 now, but this one is easy to get off. It's this one that's a little bit tight sometimes. Right, so let's get them 30 mils off, get to the side one. Right, so once the gear linkages are off of there, you can use a cable tie to hold it up there just out of the way. So as you can see, it gives you a lot more room now. I think the next step will be to undo the starter motor and to get the starter to motor off of there um, to make it easier and we'll have to get it out of there anyway. We will be uh, getting the clutch connector there, the bleeder that you can see there, as you can see that one there. We have to remove that off of there as well. There's a little clip. Um, so that little metal clip that you can lift up of there and it will slide off, obviously give it a bit of a wiggle. But before you do that, I do recommend having a special tool that I'm gonna show you in a second, holding the brake fluid there. So you can put it on there, tie it up, and it will stop providing the brake fluid into there so it stops it leaking. So I definitely recommend doing this and also when you are pulling it out of there, have a bit of uh, blue roll or something to stop the brake fluid going everywhere just to save you causing any issues with the brake fluid. Right, so as you can see, I got the tool there, uh, the special tool for the brake hoses to hold the obviously pressure and the fluid in there so it doesn't go past that point. I've unplugged the starter motor, now I'm taking the 30 mil nut off and I'm also undoing the 30 mil off of there as well to get the cable off and once the cable is off there's another I think 17 uh, mil which goes obviously holding the starter motor and there's another one under it and then the starter motor will be out. So this plug is like most of the VAG group plugs we have to push the tab back and it lifts a little tab there and you can unplug it. Right so this is just the update obviously I've undone the bolt out of there that's out. Uh, the cables are off, unplugged it, I also unplugged uh, the little cable that was there for the reverse gear. Um, also undone the bolt, obviously that was holding the starter at the top. I've undone the other bolt that holds the engine to the gearbox and the other one down there. So if you look there, so both of them are out. They're the only bolts they got at the top, obviously including the starter one. And the other thing I would recommend doing at this stage is cracking off slightly 
the bolts that hold the mount. So all of them big bolts that hold in this mounting on, just a little crack on them, um, half a turn pretty much, just to loosen them up to make it easier to get it off once obviously you're up in the air. Right guys, so now that we're pretty much done at the top there, only the mount is left to do. We've got the wheels off and they do recommend taking the whole drive shafts off when you're doing this job, both sides. Uh, by doing this bolt here and then knocking the drive shaft out. And obviously you definitely have to undo the drive shaft off the gearbox of both sides. So they definitely have to come off of there. Now this is the preference for some um, mechanics. Some manage to do the job with the drive shaft still in here in the harbor. Obviously undone from the gearbox, splitting the ball joint and pulling them out of the way. Uh, it's a bit more ag, but it's possible. It depends if it's seized in there or not, and if you want to have that extra job. But if you have to do some other work and you have to get the drive shaft out, just get it out, guys. It'll be a lot easier to do the job. So at this stage, the other thing you will have to do is take this cover off, the inner cover. So there's a couple of plastic clips there. I would use double AD40 on that definitely, and some torque screws in there. So one, two, three, four, five. And there's a couple under there, under the bumper. So there's another two. So get them out of there, get the cover off because you're gonna to need to have as much room as you can when you're getting the gearbox out of there. Right, so the clip is out. All of them screws are undone. There's five of them here. Like I said, they're Torx 20 and two under there. So now the cover should come off. Now the cover is off. It's easier to show you the bolts they have to undo. Uh, so you've got six of them around there, around the drive shaft, multi-spline key is needed for them, multi-spline key 10, uh, that you can see here. Uh, so that's the key that goes in there. Uh, I usually tap it slightly in with a hammer to make sure it's in there properly, because you don't want to cross-thread that uh, or damage the bolt, obviously, because they are a bit of a pain to, get, pain to get them out of there. So yeah, make sure it's in there properly, and like I said, you need a multi-spline key 10 for them. And it's obviously going to be exactly the same on the other side for the other drive shaft. So tap it in. Uh, there's usually two bolts that hold one bracket, so don't lose that bracket. So all of them are out now, as you can see. Like I said, there's a little bracket that comes with two bolts. Uh, so obviously get all of them out, and once they're all out, you can see that the cup will just come off. So that's all loose there. Like I said, now you have to split the bolt joint to be able to pull it back so it's out of the way of the gearbox. Right, so as I mentioned, you will have to get the ball joint split off of that on the R. This is pretty easy. You don't have to actually get off of there. All you need to do is undo three of them 17 mil nuts. I would clean the thread first and use a bit of double the 40 or maintenance spray to get them undone. Once the three undone, you pull this arm down and you'll pop the threads out of there so they'll be free. Uh, just to show you, I do recommend getting the turbo pipe out of there because it's nice and quick to get it out of there to give you more room when you maneuver in the gearbox and like i said don't forget you have to undo them six on this drive shaft as well and get it out of the way uh, you have to undo the ball joint on this side as well just to get you don't have to take this drive shaft out you just have to get it out of the way uh, pull it back a little bit and looking under here don't forget you have to still remove the starter motor you have to undo that 30 mil uh, nut first to get the bracket off and then you got another uh, bolt going through the gearbox there. I would personally leave a couple of bolts in, like I said, uh, to be the last one. So I'll leave two of them, or these two, uh, to undo in the end once the mount is off. Right, so I'm done all of the nuts on both sides. Uh, one of the threads actually snapped, so this will actually need a new bolt joint now, unfortunately. It does happen because they were corroded. So what I do now is pull the arm down, and you'll be able to get that out. And obviously now the drive shaft will be able to move out of the way enough. So the starter is off now guys, as you can see. I got a massive hole there where you can see the flywheel and the clutch. Uh, so the next thing will be is to unbolt the bracket they got there from the exhaust that goes onto the gearbox there. So there's another bolt there. Obviously we have to take this mount off two of them and i usually prefer to take the whole thing off so it's out of the way so i'll do that one as well and as you can see the drive shaft has moved out of the way it will move more as i pull that out a little bit more and the same on this side that drive shaft is out as well the ball joint is split that one will need replacing anyway so you only got one two three four bolts holding it on actually and obviously we've got the top mount there holding it
Right guys, so here's an update. It has been a while. It's probably the longest gearbox ever to be swapped. So I have been off and not been able to do a lot of work since Christmas. I'm finally back and I'm glad to see that everything's still here. Before I left, um, obviously been ill and obviously I left everything supported under the car and the lift was safe as well. Um, so I had someone coming in and checking on everything so it was all fine. But if you can see, I'm already using the transmission jacks because that was the last thing that I mentioned is that I only had few bolts left holding the gearbox and the top mount. So the top mount, I just took it off today. It was quite refreshing starting to work again. Um, so we got the bolts there that were holding the top mount on top of the gearbox. And there's another mount that's on top here with another three bolts. Uh, so they're 18 mils. And like I said, before you undo them, you need to make sure that everything is supported. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a rubber pad under the engine there, supporting the weight of the engine and this transmission jack supporting the gearbox. I've used the ladder to obviously get up there. Let me just get up there quickly. <clears throat> as you can see, I've undone three out of there and obviously the other bracket was on top of the gearbox. So that's all undone now and literally everything that's supporting the gearbox and the engine is just them two transmission jacks. So all i got left now is obviously to get the remaining three bolts that hold the gearbox on there and they're going to start coming out. And the other thing I would get out of the way is the turbo hoses because they might be in the way when I'm twisting the gearbox. And now time for the last bolt and the gearbox is already starting to come apart. There's already a gap there. So now that they're all out, I'm pretty sure if I move a little bit of the gearbox, it will come off straight away. Yep, there you go. There's a massive gap there. There's a little plate there as well. And the gearbox is starting to come off. So like I said, at this stage, it's very important to make sure everything's out of the way, guys. And like I said, I do recommend having one more person supporting the gearbox on the other side. Unfortunately, like I said, I have to do it today on my own. Right guys, so after a lot of swearing and a lot of sweating as well, the gearbox is out. So I do have to say <laughs> that I don't remember being such a pain in the ass getting it out. I know people say, yeah, you have to drop the sub frame, but you can do it without dropping the sub frame. Like I said, everyone got their own way of doing that. So what extra bits I had to do is take the 60 mil off, off there, uh, which is the bit that holds your turbo plastic pipe there and also disconnected the hose that goes from there to there. Uh, just to give enough room to twist the gearbox anti-clockwise so this bit can go past and like i said there was a lot of swearing and moving the gearbox about and i managed to push it all the way to the left by dropping and raising the engine and get off this way by twisting it anti-clockwise and i can see obviously i'm glad i got a spare flywheel and the clutch key because this one is completely knackered and it explains the noise they had while Sonata was well, so the noise was on the fourth six gear and while well, the car is idling. So if you look, look at that movement. That is way too much movement. I know it's dual mass flywheel and they're supposed to have a little bit of movement and usually you have to apply a bit more force than that to move it, but that is way too much. So it is knackered. Right, so to get the clutch plate and the clutch out of there, you're gonna have six multi-spline bolts that you got there, as you can see. Please be careful, hold this in the same time as you're undoing it because it is heavy and don't drop it on your bloody head. Uh, once the clutch uh, pressure plate and the clutch itself is off, uh, you can get to the multi-spline bolts that you got on the flywheel. They're gonna be tight on there. So you will need a breaker bar probably or a good gun. And you'll have to use a special tool to lock the teeth of the flywheel uh, by holding it on there while you're undoing them. And the same for when you're doing it off and when you're talking it up. So we're going to get the clutch and the clutch plate off now. Right guys, so I took the flywheel off the car now, and this is the one that we had on the car, and this is the one that I'm gonna be using. It's, I know it's dirty, but funny enough, this one only done about 15,000 miles, 
and this one is serviceable it's a spare one that i had so if you look obviously we knew the flywheel is knackered because the car was making a lot of noise when idling and when you put your clutch down it'll stop the noise um, so if you see this is the first check you do on the flywheel and there's a lot of metal noise there that's already not good and there's also a lot of movement on it and the spring is not even retracting back anymore and it's moving about seven teeth so yeah that is definitely no good look at the amount of movement in that now this one has got a bit of movement and it's under five teeth which is good and it does still retract back enough and if you look sideways there's no noise so that's pretty good. This is just a quick way of checking the flywheels, guys. And like I said, this one done 15,000 miles and I will be cleaning it and reusing it. Right guys, to put the flywheel on now, obviously make sure everything's clean. Uh, you will need new bolts. I do recommend using new bolts or, or if you're using the old bolts, make sure they're nice and clean and you will need a lock tie on it as well. Uh, so that is just to keep it in there nice and tight because there's a lot of weight to hold on and they're not a big bolt. So you will need to put that it does help with the vibration of the flywheel so they don't come undone. So like I said, I'm gonna put the link in the description below for the Loctite to use on it. And you're gonna to need to do it up to 60 Newton meters first. And then you have to mark each bolt and do 90 degrees uh, afterwards as well. Right, so as you can see, just a little bit of a Loctite on it. And we're ready to put the first bolt on there. Let me just grab the flywheel. Like I said, make sure it's nice and clean. Put it on there. Obviously, you'll have to turn it to align all the holes. There you go, that's it. Start it up. And the same for all the other five. Now, to torque them up, obviously, the first 60 Newton meters is not too bad, but I usually put the bolt back in the thread or you can get a special tool that's actually quite cheap um, that you fit on there with the bolt and it locks the flywheel obviously for when you're doing it up uh, so in my case I put the bolt back in and I'm using the bar there as you can see locking in between the teeth and I will be doing it up while holding the bar and it's 60 on all of them just double check everything Right guys, so once you've done 60 Newton meters, what you have to do now is mark the flywheel and the top of the bolt, as you can see there. And now we have to do 90 degrees to go to about there on all of them. So that's what we're going to do now. And that's obviously the best way of doing it, unless you've got a special degree tool. But yeah, what we're going to do now is just go up to 90 degrees on all of them. So the 90 degrees is quite tough, guys. You will need a big bar for this. All right, so as you can see, all of them are done up now, done 90 degrees on all of them. So please double check that. And now we're ready to clean it off again with a brake cleaner and install our clutch kit. Right, so for the clutch kit, I will be reusing the clutch kit that came with the flywheel. They only have 15,000 miles. And I can see that it's a good clutch. It's not that worn because there's plenty of life left on it if you look at it. So that's good. And when you fit in the clutch, if you look at it, you can see the sides are different. There's more coming out on this side. And usually on the clutch plate, you do have a writing saying gearbox side. So this is the gearbox side, so it will have to go that way. And obviously this is where the gearbox is gonna come in. Uh, so that's just a quick tip guys, because on some clutches you can fit it the wrong way and then you'll apply the pressure and it will cause an issue. So yeah, just please make sure that you fit the right way. The gearbox side way is obviously gonna be facing towards the gearbox. For clutch fitment, I do recommend, although you can do it without it, but I do recommend using a proper tool kit that you can get. So this is the Bergen one. I'm gonna put the link in the description below for you. So you get all the different adapters. Obviously one will need to go into the flywheel to sit there still, and the other one into your clutch plate to make sure it's in the middle. Now, if you don't put the clutch plate exactly in the middle, then you're gonna have an issue. The gearbox will not go on properly. Right, so to use this tool guys, you got different adapters. This is the end that goes into the flywheel, so you need to make sure it sits in there nice and tight and not moving. So screw it on there. And then you got the adapter, which is this one. You got many different ones. This is the one that needs to go into the clutch plate and make sure it's sitting nicely in there as well. So just to show you, obviously, that's how you're gonna go in. Gonna sit in there 
and it's going to be pretty much in the middle well it's going to be quite spot on in the middle with the clutch being in there because once you start doing up the clutch plate it will start moving all over the place and if you hold that in there it will do it up and it will stay exactly in the middle right so there's only one way that the plate can go back on now There you go, make sure the clutch is in the middle and this is where we're going to use the tool. There you go, they'll keep it in the middle, that's pretty good. You can move it slightly but you can see that it's going to be right in the middle there which is good. And now we can start putting the bolts back in. Just starting them up by hand and we're going to torque them up in a bit. There we are. Right, so once you've done all the bolts slightly, just by hand, finger tight, you can see that the clutch is sitting right in the middle there, and once you start doing them up, we're gonna tie it up, so it's not gonna be able to move anymore, uh, hence using the tool. Obviously, like I say, if you haven't got a tool, you can do it by, as long as you're looking straight in it, and it looks like it's dead in the middle, that's fine. Uh, the torque settings for the little bolts is either 30 Newton meters, on the M7 bolt, it's 20 Newton meters, so you have to look it up. But that's the two torques that you got there. So yeah, I'm gonna go for 20 Newton meters, pretty much. So again, I'm using the bolt and the bar to hold the flywheel. And gonna do the 20 Newton meters now. Lovely job, it's all done. Right, so once the clutch is done up, obviously double check everything's in the middle. Guys, one thing I forgot to mention is, uh, we can always try before doing this, if you've got a new clutch kit, make sure that uh, the actual clutch, the plate that I had in the middle there, that it will go onto the gearbox. Make sure that it slides on there properly, that it's the right size, there's no play, and etc. because it does happen sometimes when you get the wrong clutch kit. So make sure it's sliding on there, on the shaft properly. Um, that's the only advice I can give you. But yeah, at this stage guys, we are ready. Right guys, so just a quick update here. Uh, the gearbox is already on there. As you can see, the transmission jacks are gone. But you can put the gearbox back in without taking the caps off. As you can see, the, the drive shaft caps and without taking the sub frame and the drive shafts completely off. So I've done it. It is a bit tricky. There's a bit of movement that you need to make sure um, you have got someone else helping you. But yeah, it does go back in there without damaging anything, which is quite good. So obviously as soon as I start a couple of bolts, as you can see, one, two, three, four, that started as well. And obviously that's the most difficult part is making sure that the drive shaft cap on this side goes past this point. So that's what I'm saying, it's a bit wiggly job, but it gets in there. Like I said, a lot of people do it different ways. Some people drop the subframe, some people take the caps off, but those caps are pain in the ass to put back on. Um, so what you do now obviously is fit everything back together, how it was. Like I said, the gearbox, uh, to go in, it pretty much, that's how it is now, but to go in, it was pretty much 90 degrees up. Uh, so the starter part was right at the bottom. So I went all the way up there, lowered the engine a little bit, and then I start working my way, turning it clockwise until everything aligned. Obviously looking through the starter hole to see the shaft in the gearbox joining the uh, clutch plate. So that was all good. But yeah, everything's back in now. The top mount is obviously holding the gearbox and the engine, and we're gonna start reassembling everything, putting back, everything back together. The torque settings for the bolts that go into the drive shafts there is 40 Newton meters. Uh, I had to research that because I couldn't find it on my system. So from what I found from the pictures, it's 40 Newton meters, so it's not too bad. And yeah, let's just start putting everything back together and being careful, and I'll keep you up to date once I get to the stage where we have to bleed the clutch there using obviously the unit and the bleeder at the top. But yeah, first I have to put everything back together. Right, so here we are, uh, the drive shafts are on now. Don't forget the bolts are 40 Newton meters to go on there. Make sure they're going nice and even all around it. You can adjust it with your hand. So start them all up slightly first and then do them up evenly. So like I said, 40 Newton meters on that one, according to the book. And the bow joints all done up now, as, a, as you can see, obviously one of the threads snapped, so that will need replacing. I have to buy that. 
Uh, don't forget, if you drain the gear oil, so the drain plug there, don't forget to top it up. Uh, so in this case, this was a replacement gearbox. I had to put 2.2 liters of oil in this. Uh, I'm gonna put all this stuff in the description below anyway. The starter is on, the bracket is on, all the sensors are plugged in, the cable's on the starter as well. The bolts are all done up, the mount is on. Another bolt there, another bolt there. The drive shaft is on as well. Again, the same torque settings for them. And uh, then this ball joint is new. I told you that the seal was split, so I replaced it in the same time. That was a bit of a pain, but I'll do a video for you on how to replace the ball joint using that one. And like I said, everything is on. The turbo pipe is back on as well. I'm just gonna show you quickly what's happening at the top there, but yeah, so far at the bottom, we are done. So at the top, uh, the gear levers are all done up. They've put back on. As you can see, don't forget to obviously put the clip on properly at the top there. So the bolts, the 30 mils, two bolts are done up. The 30 mil on the side is also done up, which is that one there. Uh, obviously put the bolt on first with the thread. Then the other bolt is on there. Um, the starter is held as well. Bolt there, the cable is on it as well. Don't forget obviously to plug everything back in all the sensors, what we've got left now is to put the battery tray on there, bolt it on. Obviously don't forget at this stage, we have to connect the clutch fluid into there and then we will have to bleed it. Uh, so that's the only thing that's gonna be left after everything's in place. I would leave the air box off for now until you bleed the clutch properly because it gives you a lot more room to obviously get to it. And at the bottom, obviously what we've got left is to put the cover off that we took off of here and then obviously put the wheels back on and that will be job done on that side. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna do now. Put the battery tray on there and then get ready to connect everything and bleed the clutch. Right, so to bleed the clutch, once it's all plugged in and the clip is on, I'll put a bit of paper around there and this is the bleeder. So make sure that in your brake fluid reservoir you got plenty of brake fluid in there, so make sure you keep an eye on it, topping it up. I got it full. And what you do afterwards is, well, it's easier when you got two people actually, so one can press the clutch all the way down and the other one undoes it and does it up. Uh, so what's happening, obviously you can start by just undoing this. So you turn it anti-clockwise, and you see in my case there's already brake fluid coming out. So I'm gonna do it up and explain you what you're supposed to do. So once you undo it, there's gonna be air coming out and you're gonna see the bubbles coming out of there. And when that is happening, uh, what you have to do is wait till only clean brake fluid is coming out of there, then do it up, turn it clockwise all the way, it will lock itself, you can do it with your fingers, don't need any tools for this. And after that, feel the pedal. If the pedal feels good, if it obviously responsive and it doesn't stay all the way down, and then obviously start the car up, try it. And for that, obviously you have to put everything back on. But yeah, usually if you leave it run like this, all the air can come out because of where it is and it might be fine. But if not, if your pedal is not very responsive or there's still a lot of air coming out, what you can do is get somewhere in the car and what you do is um, get more paper. So once someone's in the car, you got the clutch pedal all the way up. So you uh, undo this while the pedal is all the way up, you undo it. Uh, ask the person who's in the car to press the clutch all the way down and you'll see obviously uh, make sure you're wearing goggles and you got paper on top of it because it will start uh, squirting out of there so you need to make sure that the clutch is being pressed slowly and you'll see all the air coming out and the fluid so once you pressed all the way down you do it up and tell him to put the foot up again so the clutch goes all the way up and repeat again obviously once it's all the way up open it tell him to put the clutch down and then close it again. And obviously, once there's no more air in there, and don't forget obviously to keep an eye on the brake fluid level, once there's no more air, your pedal should feel fine. But that's the procedure usually to bleed your clutch. Right guys, so we're all done at the top, the battery's back in, don't forget there's three 10 mils that hold the carrier on, the cover is on, uh, the leads are plugged in, connected the sensor there, and the vacuum pipe there as well, that's all connected. So good, obviously don't forget to connect the holes on there properly. Uh, so the air box is in, the cover is on as well. So it's all good, don't forget you got the screw to do up there and get it on the rubber there, so that's all good. 
So we are pretty much done at the top. Well, that, this is it pretty much, the battery's connected. So like I said, all I've got left now is to put the wheels back on. I've tried the clutch pedal already, it feels good after I've bled it. Uh, so I'm gonna put the cover on, put the wheels back on and get the car all the way down on the floor. And job is done guys. And don't forget the torque setting from what I've seen on the bolts for the wheels is 120 newton meters. But I will double check that and put it in the description below anyway. Right, so here we are, the job is done now, I'm happy with it. So guys, please make sure you follow all the steps and you torque everything out properly. The wheels are 120 newton meters for the bolts and obviously double check everything. That's what I usually do once I finish the job, go up in the air again, check everything, if everything's tight, if everything's connected and etc. And yeah, this is pretty much it. Go for a drive, don't go crazy, just drive it slowly, check for any noises or etc. Obviously check the operation of the clutch. Um, if it's all good, then happy days, bring it back on. On the lift, have a look for any oil leaks, gear oil leaking from drive shafts, etc. But hopefully there's no problems with that. And yeah, as long as you follow the steps, you should be fine, guys. Like I said, this is my way of doing the job and I hope you find it helpful. Obviously, the main purpose of this video is to show you the tools you need, how everything comes undone, the torque specs, and how I do the job, obviously. I know there's different ways of doing it. You might see different videos, but this is how I do it and it worked well. Uh, I know it took three weeks because I've been ill, but yeah, the job is done. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Comment below, let me know, like the video, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you soon. Bye.